What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Today we're going to be answering a question that I've been getting a ton in the stream. And basically the question is, should I use Harbinger of Dawn? Is Harbinger of Dawn better than Festering? Is Harbinger of Dawn better than Summit Shaper? Just a small disclaimer before we get into this. Um, I don't normally build three star or four star weapons just because as you guys know, uh, resources in this game are really, really slim right now as they're trying to gate us on content. So I just try to focus on a particular star grade. Um, and you know, so that way I can manage my resources as efficiently as possible. Uh, just due to the sheer amount of times we've been asked about this weapon and of course the event weapon, I decided to just build both, obviously for the view grab, <laughs> so you guys can see for yourselves which weapon is best. And then we'll talk about this kind of like in a small breakdown, not like crazy numbers or anything like that, but just my take on each of the individual weapons playing with each of them, um, and then you guys can decide from there. But what we'll do first is I'll talk to you guys, I'll show you the stat breakdown of my Albedo, so you guys can see what my Albedo stats are, and then of course I'll showcase the weapon and we'll do it kind of in three phases, and then I'll give you guys as an overview of the whole experience at the end. So first up, we're gonna be looking at the Harbinger of Dawn, guys. And my total attributes down the line uh, for this weapon are gonna be 78.5% crit, 195.3% crit damage. The Geo bonus damage is gonna stay the same, 90.4, no matter what. My attack value with this weapon is gonna be 970, and then my defense value will be 1687. The 1687 will be static throughout this test, just because none of these weapons affect his defense at all. Uh, the attack, of course, will vary based on the weapon and or combos that we use. One thing I want you guys to keep in mind is that Klee's C2 reduces the enemy's defense by 23%. Also, one thing to take of note on top of Klee's Constellation 2 is that we're going to be utilizing Albedo's Constellation 2, which basically increases his ultimate damage and his Fatal Blossom damage by up to 120% of Albedo's defense. All right, so I want you guys to be aware of that uh, going into this test. So let's go ahead and dive on in. <laughs> So the next weapon we're going to be testing is the Festering Desire. Uh, so we're going to lose some crit damage here, but gain some attack. That'll bring our attack to 1,063, but it'll lower our crit rate to 50%, uh, minus the extra 7% that the Festering Sword gives us for elemental skills. And then, of course, the crit damage uh, is going back to 152. Now, the big thing here, guys, is to understand that this particular weapon is only refinement 2. So we're getting about 4% per level. So we still got like another 12% damage that we can get here, it looks like. <laughs> All right, guys, and last but not least, it's going to take us to Summit Shaper. And once we get into Summit Shaper, this is going to have an attack percent sub. Uh, this is going to give a massive boost to his attack power. He also is going to have a new passive that is also going to increase his attack power. And if he's shielded, it's going to basically double that effect. So we'll have his basic 49.6% plus another 80% of his base, basically. Um, and this sword is actually R5 as well, so you guys can see this. <laughs> And the winner is Harbinger of Dawn. Now, before you guys listen, before you guys go crazy, the reason why I think that Harbinger of Dawn wins this battle, even though the DPS output on, let's say, Summit Shaper was clearly higher, um, the kicker, though, that we're talking about here is consistency. All right, and so we're going to talk about some pros and cons, too, of running Harbinger of Dawn, and then we'll get into the other two weapons as well. So the big thing with Harbinger of Dawn is this. Um, the crit damage, the 42.7% crit damage, well, it's going to be a little bit more once you get this to 90, um, is just a really, really nice damage boost. If you couple that with the fact that the HP, if your HP is above 90%, then it increases your crit rate by 28%. So what this is going to do is going to give you a lot of cushion. And crit rate plus crit damage equals consistency in this game. Higher crit equals higher 
consistency equals higher damage overall. The big thing though is if you guys are utilizing Harbinger of Dawn, I'd imagine that you guys are opting to run Albedo in more of a support position. What I mean by that is you're utilizing Albedo to use this E, get on the field, get off the field, right? Drop E, leave. Bring it back when it's time to ult, get his ass back out of there, bring it back when it's time to E, and that's it. If he takes any damage, it kind of nullifies the 28%, which can hurt you depending on how, on how high or low your crit rate is. And you guys know as well as I do that rolling crit rate isn't exactly the funnest thing in the world in this game currently, because getting stats in this game is hard. Due to the difficulty of you acquiring stats, having the three-star Harbinger of Dawn, I think overall it's just the easier choice between all three of these weapons, because you don't have to rely too much on trying to get the perfect artifact, which... RNG is a cruel mistress and there's no telling when you're going to get the gear that you want. Now taking that into consideration there are some drawbacks. Again though if you guys are maximizing your defense and you guys are building your crit rate, your crit damage and utilizing Albedo in that support function it will make your life so much easier and you will have a ton of fun being able to put up the numbers you'll need to put up without incessantly worrying about getting perfect rolls on your gear. The trap to that though is I would say don't run the risk of running Harbinger of Dawn if you have 5% crit rate and you're thinking that the 28% is going to make a difference because it won't really. <laughs> so don't use it as an excuse to be lazy and avoid the stats that you're actually going to need as your Albedo gets stronger. So let me just say that Festering Sword is great, like with the elemental damage plus the energy recharge, it's going to be great for ult spam. Uh, this sword is just somewhat in the middle. Um, it scored the lowest damage output of all three of the weapons, uh, but naturally it's still refinement too, so we still got another 12% damage that we can get there. And granted, like we're still suffering from only having 50% crit, so the damage is of course less consistent as well. So this is going to score the lowest of the three weapon tests, and you guys saw that for yourself. Um, Yes, you can get some more damage, but I think it's still easier to build Harbinger over this weapon. At the end of that though, if you just like how the sword looks and you just want to use it and you're enjoying your bonuses that you're getting just from using it in Dragonspine, by all means go for it. Just be prepared at the end of the day, end of the day when we leave Dragonspine that obviously those bonuses are going to go bye bye. Now, in terms of Summit Shaper, um, you guys saw Summit Shaper just raw damage output just wins, right? So. If you're looking at a situation where I was able to get the equivalent crit, 75% plus crit rate, um, same crit rate as, of course, running Harbinger of Dawn, then the damage output, I think, at Summon Shaper with all the key things in place is going to win in terms of raw DPS. The problem, though, or the challenge, though, I would say with Summit Shaper is it costs $2,000 maybe to get this to R5, okay? Um, on top of that, after you pay the money, you still got to get the gear rolls. If you're not getting the gear rolls, you're not spending the money to get it to R5, then you're going to run into a situation where it's just clearly not going to be the output that you need. So due to the sheer difficulty of actually getting this weapon where you need it to be to outperform Harbinger of Dawn, um, again, this is why this one had to take the back seat to Harbinger of Dawn. Now, it's crazy to me that why they would make a three-star weapon better than a five-star weapon. <laughs> this I will never understand. But of course, it's MiHoYo, so they're probably trying to make us spend as much money so we can get the maximum output from this weapon. So, with that being said, if you're a whale, go for Summon Shaper. If you're anywhere in between a whale and free-to-play, it looks like... Harbinger of Dawn is going to take the cake. You guys saw the damage output potential of Summit Shaper. Naturally, if you're going to get another 20-30% crit rate or 40% crit damage, um, the numbers on Summit Shaper will be absolutely out of this world. But that seems to me like an overtime thing, not a right now thing. Right now, it seems like Harbinger of Dawn is going to win and continue to win until you get the gear. So anyway, guys, um, that's all I wanted to cover today. I know you guys are probably super curious about my artifacts. So I'll just run through these with you guys here. We got the, f the flower here. We got, uh, you know, the feather. You can see this with the crit, crit damage, energy recharge. The hourglass is going to be at uh, defense because I am I opted to run with the defense build once I took my albedo to C2. Goblet of Chisel Crag is geo bonus damage, which I need a better piece because you guys can see that these rolls on here are atrocious. So that'll come with time. 
And then my helmet, of course, is going to be crit damage. Um, so yeah, I still got a lot of geo gear that I need to farm. I just wanted to take a look at all three of these weapons. So if you guys are curious as to which one you should use, I'm sure you guys have been hearing about Harbinger of Dawn by now. You guys have really been looking at, you know, festering the festering sword because you know it's free and they're giving it to you. And of course, it looks freaking amazing. And if you guys happen to pull Summit Shaper, like you guys are probably wondering what you're going to do. So again, TLDR. For ease of use, Harbinger of Dawn. Once you have the gear and if you're whaling, then Summit Shaper. And if you're somewhere in between or just like the design, Festering Desire. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys got any other questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comment box below and I'll be happy to assist. And with that being said, we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.